Good evening, everyone. We warmly welcome you to the celebration of the birth of the Bob. The Bob announced that humanity stood at the threshold of a new era. His mission was to last only six years, which was to prepare the way for the coming of a manifestation of God, who would usher in the age of peace and justice promised in all the world's religions, Baha'u'llah. On a spring evening in 1844, a conversation took place between two young men that heralded a new era for the human race. A Persian merchant announced to a traveler in the city of Shiraz that he was the bearer of a divine revelation destined to transform the spiritual life of humanity. The merchant's name was Sayyid Ali Muhammad. Today, he is known to history as the Bab meaning the gate in Arabic. Tonight we share with you a glimpse of the power of love expressed through the life of the Bob. This thread of love will be woven throughout this program as well as in, pro in the program for the birth of Baha'u'llah, which will be celebrated in two days time. Baha'is around the world celebrate joyously the twin births with their friends. We hope you enjoy tonight's program.
The middle of the 19th century was one of the most turbulent periods in the world's history. Great revolutions were underway. In parts of Europe and North America, time-worn social structures and relationships were being challenged by sudden changes in the fields of agriculture, industry, and economics. At the time, throughout the world, followers of diverse religions perceived that humanity was on the cusp of a new stage in its development, and many prepared themselves for the coming of a promised one, praying fervently that they would recognize him. On the night of May 23rd, 1844, the Bob announced that he was the bearer of a divine revelation, destined to set a new direction for the spiritual life of humankind. Born in Shiraz, a city in southern Iran, in 1819, the Bab was the symbolic gate between the past ages of prophecy and a new age of fulfillment for humanity. His primary purpose was to awaken the people to the fact that a new period in human history had begun, one which would witness the unification of the entire human race and the emergence of a world civilization of spiritual and material prosperity. This great day would be established throughout the influence of a divinely inspired educator, whom the Bab referred to as he whom God shall make manifest. It was his own mission, the Bab declared, to herald the coming of this promised manifestation of God. The Bab explained that the new manifestation would usher in an age of peace and justice that was the hope of every longing heart and the promise of every religion. The Bab instructed his followers to spread this message throughout the country and to prepare the people for this long awaited day. The Bob announced that humanity stood at the threshold of a new era. His mission, which was to last only six years, was to prepare the way for the coming of a manifestation of God 
who would usher in the age of peace and justice promised in all the world's religions. Baha'u'llah. Bordering on the Persian Gulf in southern Persia, there is a very beautiful province called Fars. This province is quite large and was the seat of Persia's kings and rulers. It was also the home of the ancient Parsis. It is celebrated in Persian literature as a veritable throne of learning. Here, nearly 700 years ago, the great poets Hafiz and Sadi lived and died. In Shiraz, the capital of Fars, there lived a merchant family who for many generations had been noted for their piety, morality, and generosity. It was into this family that the Bab was born. The Bab's father died when the boy was quite young and the eldest of his three uncles, who was also a merchant, took care of him and raised him. His uncle witnessed such remarkable things that years later, when the Bab raised the new call of God, he pledged himself in the path of the cause and willingly sacrificed both possessions and life. As a child, the Bab gave signs of remarkable precocity and while still very young, wrote beautiful essays in Persian and Arabic. Those who read them were astonished at his knowledge for they were aware how meager had been his education. The Arabic scholars were especially interested in his writings in that language and thought it very extraordinary that one without learning could write such perfect Arabic. After he went into the business, his family noticed what seemed to them certain unusual traits in the young man. He would depart at midday, retire to a secluded spot, and meditate, chant, and read prayers, spending hours in deep spiritual communion. Observing this, the Bob's family endeavored to awaken in him a greater interest in acquiring wealth and fame, but they soon found that these things did not interest him. In the Bob, physical beauty was joined to that of the spirit. His hair was black and his dark brown eyes shone like stars. His features were symmetrical and his face was luminous. His carriage was majestic, yet simple and humble. The purity of his character was such that even his enemies could find no fault with him. It would be hard to imagine a life more spotless, more devoted to love for humanity. He reflected the light of the spirit and radiated to those around him such wonderful spiritual life. He was full of happiness, contentment, and resignation. It seemed as if the Spirit of God were shining from that young body. I am the mystic fane which the hand of omnipotence hath reared. I am the lamp which the finger of God hath lit within its niche and caused to shine with deathless splendor. I am the flame of that supernal light that glowed upon Sinai in the gladsome spot and lay concealed in the midst of the burning bush. I am, I am, I am the promised one. I am the one whose name you have for a thousand years invoked, at whose mention you have risen, whose advent you have longed to witness, and the hour of whose revelation you have prayed God to hasten. Verily I say, it is incumbent upon the peoples of both the East and the West to obey my word and pledge allegiance to my person. I am the primal point from which hath been generated all created things. I am the countenance of God whose splendor can never be obscured, the light of God whose radiance can never fade. I am one of the sustaining pillars of the primal word of God. Whosoever hath recognized me hath known all that is true and right, and hath attained all that is good and seemly. The substance wherewith God hath created me, 
is not the clay out of which others have been formed. He hath conferred upon me that which the worldly wise can never comprehend, nor faithful discover. Tablet revealed by Baha'u'llah in the honor of the anniversary of the birth of the Bab. All praise be to thee, O oh my God. Inasmuch as thou hast adorned the world with the splendor of the dawn, following the night wherein was born the one who heralded the manifestation of thy transcendent sovereignty, the day spring of thy divine essence, and the revelation of thy supreme lordship, I beseech thee. O creator of the heavens and fashioner of names, to graciously aid those who have shorted beneath the shadow of thine abounding mercy and have raised their voice amidst the people of the world for the glorification of thy name. O oh my God, thou beholdest the Lord of all mankind, confined in his most great prison, calling aloud thy name, gazing upon thy face, proclaiming that which hath enraptured the denizens of the kingdom of revelation and of creation. O oh my God, I behold mine own self captive in the hands of thy servants. Yet the light of thy sovereignty and the revelation of thine invincible power shine resplendent from his face enabling all to know of a certainty that thou art God, and there is none other God but thee. Neither can the power of the powerful frustrate thee, nor the ascendancy of the rulers prevail against thee. Thou doest whatsoever thou willest, by virtue of thy sovereignty, which encompasseth all created things, and ordaineth that which thou pleasest, through the potency of thy behest, which pervadeth the entire creation. I implore thee by the glory of thy manifestation and by the power of thy might, thy sovereignty and thy exaltation, to render victorious those who have arisen to serve thee, who have aided thy cause and humbled themselves before the splendor of the light of thy face. Make them then, O oh my God, triumphant over thine enemies and cause them to be steadfast in thy service that through them the evidences of thy dominion may be established throughout thy realms and the token of thine endowment power be manifested in thy lands. Verily thou art the potent to do what thou willest, no God is there by thee, the help in peril, the self-subsisting.
May you become as the waves of one sea, stars of the same heaven, fruits adorning the same tree, roses of one garden, in order that through you, the oneness of humanity may establish its temple in the world of mankind. For you are the ones who are called to uplift the cause of unity among the nations of the earth. Your efforts must be lofty. Exert yourselves with heart and soul so that perchance through your efforts, the light of universal peace may shine and this darkness of estrangement and enmity may be dispelled from amongst men that all men may become as one family and consort together in love and kindness that the East may assist the West and the West give help to the East for all are the inhabitants of one planet the people of one original native land and the flocks of one shepherd, Abdul Baha. Give you this one thought to keep. I am with you still. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning hush, I am the swift uplifting rush. Of quiet birds in circled flight, and the soft stars that shine at night. Do not think of me as gone. I am with you in each new dawn. As I reflect on the birth of the Bob, I realize how humbled I am in his presence and in the presence of God. They make me feel small, but not in a bad way. I feel like I'm a kid who is small physically, who doesn't know everything, who has the best intentions, but may not always get it right. And even when I do fail, fall, or stumble, I know that God, the Bab, Baha'u'llah, and Abdul Baha are all waiting at the end for me with open arms to catch me before I fall as I take my first steps. In Korean, the word for baby or kid looks a little bit like capital O-H, is how it's pronounced. And capital O-H, can you see how A stands taller and is a little more squished together, much like my thoughts, I think they're big, I think I'm big, I think I'm capital O-H, but really, in front of you, I'm A. I'm no know-it-all, you could flatten me out on the table and peer at my inside so easily, that's the loving power you have, you knock all my walls down until I'm capital O-H. Realization hits me like capital O-H, I am a kid but not eh, eh stands a lot taller than I do in front of you, how could I stand tall, I don't have strength to stand tall when it's you, my sunshine who melts the chocolate borders of my ice cream away if I love you in Korean is sarang or love plus that same letter that looks like capital OH and means kid love I love you sarang love k 
kid. Yes, because I am still a kid in front of your love. I blush and stumble and don't know how to act when you send down blessings. I throw tantrums when you test me. I still don't know how to be thankful properly. And yet you don't even wait for me to say thanks before you send down another blessing. Your existence is a blessing that I take for granted because at the end of the day, I'm still just... A kid in front of your love 10 years, 20 and 30 years from now, if you let me live that far, I will still be a kid in front of your love because you are always running ahead, a parent with open arms as I run towards you, stumbling and falling. I'm walking for the first time and you're always there to catch me. I'm living for the first time and you always let me feel things out for as long as I need before I get back up and run again. I love you. I find it hard to say out loud but so easy to type. I love you and thank you for loving me by simply existing by radiating your presence, by never doubting me, nor forgetting about me, nor turning your back on me, even though I'll always be a kid in front of your love. Oh my God, unite the hearts of thy servants. Oh my God, to them thy great purpose may they follow thy commandments and abide in thy law help them O oh god in their endeavor and grant them strength to serve thee oh god what we need is strength they say the grass is greener on the other side, across the fence, but we defeat the trends when we realize we need to send a message to where our souls used to dwell. Oh God, leave us not to ourselves, lost in these spells. We need your guidance from the well, spring of your laws, let us sing for your cause. Uh. May they follow thy commandments and abide in thy law. Help them near and your spark is fear unite through your light let the hearts be cheered when evil is revered and good is just weird only together with our helper and our lord we persevere oh god guide our steps through thy knowledge we have no trouble here identifying problems since your commandments remain solid then only through your love can we expect to find solace Unite the hearts of thy servants